Okay, everybody in YouTube land, what we have here is a JL 300 by four version one. Um, and I'm doing another little bit more elaborate de video on this one too, because it's kind of a rant. It's, I don't, I'm trying not to rant, but I can't help it. This I'll show you, this is the reason why I don't like working on this stuff anymore. So this, um, is stuff left over from my former boss that I've, you know, been working on kind of on the side and I don't have a problem doing that for him because he's done a lot for me in the past. So I kind of tit for tat type thing, but anyways, I don't accept this stuff from other people right now. I'm not accepting repairs over the internet right this moment in time, maybe in the future, but currently I'm not accepting work. So I do these videos kind of as a, uh, helpful, insightful, maybe you can fix your own stuff or maybe not kind of thing, uh, or the educational purposes anyways. So back to the task at hand, this is the reason why I don't like working on this stuff because this, for one thing, whoever the previous technician was, I say technician in air quotes because they didn't put all the hardware back on it. So all this stuff's missing. And these are supposed to have shoulder washers on it, like that black one right there, that isolate these from the chassis. So I'm missing all of that hardware on this. Might be able to come up with something to replace it. I don't know. I don't know how proprietary those RCA jacks actually are. I'll have to see. But the other trouble is back here. This is where the previous work was done. I mean, look at that. Look at that mess. The person ripped out the plated through hole where Q404 is and then just ran this weird jumper wire to the, the gate resistor and if you look, squished it right up against the heat sink where I'm sure it shorted out again. And yes, this is the stage that's damaged again. And to top it all off, these are supposed to be IRF 540s. I mean, you can substitute these with certain other transistors, but you really have to know what you're doing before you just start going in here and substituting transistors. You really have to know what you're doing. So you're better off just staying original unless you have some reason to upgrade it. And if you're going off the advice of another actual professional technician, because the transistors that this person used in here were these IRF, iz 44 ends you can kind of see it those are for the power supply not the output stage so yeah and the power supply look it's it's destroyed so i'm gonna have to rebuild it too uh and, and this goes back to that sight sound and smell thing um that i refer back to because when i took the lid off of this this unit the smell was very pungent and this is why triggers the sight senses because look the transistors blown out if that one's bad they probably all are and you have to change them all anyway because this is used in a switching circuit i try to match them up um i don't know if the resistors are in good shape or not no nope, there's a hole blown in that resistor you can kind of see it right in the middle which means i got to change those driver transistors too just out of principle because usually when something like that happens, it puts stresses on all the other components that are related to driving to that, that component. So, anyways, I pulled the transistors out. Uh, these are insulated transistors, and they're the wrong ones anyway. Not, I mean, you can't just, just substitute like that, because that that has only got half the voltage capability that the 540 has. The 540 is getting kind of an old transistor. It is... But at the same time, this amplifier is nearly 20 years old anyways. These things are starting to get into the, the old school class. Because, I mean, it, it's just, it is what it is. It's old. They don't make them like this anymore. But, yeah, the 540 is an older MOSFET. Um, they're still good MOSFETs, but there have been a lot of versions that superseded them that perform better than these do. This one's not one of them. This is meant for a switching circuit, not an analog linear amp like this one is because there's all four driver cards um this one here i took i took the shorter transistors out so i can do a quick power up to see what this thing's doing 
And trying to do this on the bench is not easy because I don't have the right cabling for this stuff. Uh, so you'll have to bear with me. I'm just going to shove these in the holes. I'm sure there's a joke in there somewhere. But for now, let's just shove these in the holes. Okay. Power on. Yeah, we've got, we kind of have, yeah, we got one that's not wanting to turn on. So, we got to fix this driver card too. That's probably why these failed to begin with. You just have to watch out for that. And there are some common problems that occur on these driver cards anyway. These are known for developing cracks on the surface mount resistors. And down in there towards the bottom where the pins are, there's some 10 ohm resistors. They tend to go bad or develop intermittent shorts and stuff too so we'll get this card out of here and we'll look at it and get it worked on one more thing i seem to get asked this question a lot um i just want to kind of go over that a little bit is how these things come apart well first thing you got to do is underneath here on the front side are all of the the speaker and power terminal screws you got to screw all of them in first otherwise it won't clear this plastic once you do that, then there are nuts and insulators that have to come off on all of these RCA connections. Mm -hmm. Once you do that, there are uh, hex Allen 2.5, which I don't have here. I have the, the actual key, but there's an M2.5, side screws, side screws. Then the two plates come off. Um, also, you need to take these clips off. And you see this hole in the top? It's very easy to do with a right angle hex key because what you would do is you put this in the hole and then you just rock it back and it goes sprink and it just comes right off. Just pop, 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 just pop them all off like that. And then if you're careful, you don't break them because the minute you break off that little ear, you're done. And I don't know where you buy replacements except parts amps, I, don't, I really don't know. So you pop all those off. Then there's four M3 or H3 bits here, which I pulled out, it's in the drill bit. Uh, all four of those off, and then this heat sink will come off, and then it frees the board up, the board slides back. So from that point, we need to be careful because the LED indicators are right here. So now, once you free the PCB out of the way, I have to go in here and remove that PCB and then there's your two screws so you don't lose what they are so I set that over here with this other pile of hardware junk and now that board is free so I can just remove that and lose the plastic in the process and now uh, it's all free so now that we got the board out we can look at uh, what we need to do one thing i did notice is the uh this board is falling apart because that that uh plating on that through hole came out real easy and i used an actual professional desoldering tool anyways so in a nutshell i don't see anything burnt because normally when these surface mount resistors go bad you tend to see a hole in the top of them but what I do notice is quite a few of them have cracked solder joints. Um, so the rule of thumb with these JLs is you basically need to re-solder with fresh solder just about everything surface mount on this board. Uh, it's a known problem. And then you can, this, the solder joints for some of these power transistors are also very sketchy. So something you just have to keep in mind. So I went ahead and changed the uh, outputs here, power supply transistors here, along with the driver transistors and the 47 ohm resistors. These driver transistors actually test good, but I changed those out, of, out as a matter of precaution. And you can see the burnt resistors that went with it and uh, stuff like that. So anyways, I went ahead and re-soldered this board. Um, 
I teched this transistor because it is in line. That's the gate drive transistor for these outputs over here. Uh, and it sits right here. So it comes up from this pin right there and runs around and around town over there. Now, I went ahead and put this all back together. These resistors were measuring correctly. So I went ahead and resoldered it, put it back together, put it in a board, and I still did not get these two green lights. They would kind of come up for a second and go away. And these were staying cold while the rest were getting hot. So I pulled the board back out and checked everything again. Lo and behold, this 10 ohm resistor now reads like 4.7K ohm. So that resistor is now open. And if you looked at the light just right, you can kind of see a hole in there. And I think I mentioned that earlier in the video. But it was still reading all right but now it's not so it's going to have to be replaced so and since these are known for going open anyways i'm just going to go ahead and replace both of them just because so uh i'll be back in a bit of course it never fails my cousin murphy's always by my side uh i ordered the wrong ones these are supposed to be 1206s and they're 0805s whoops i'll just have to make do resistors are in there um, time to put the transistor back in and put it back in the board and try it again. Alrighty then. Board is now back in place. Um, that board's back in place. Got the wires in there. Got the power supply on. Get ready to try this thing. This time for a second attempt on camera. Because I honestly do not know what's going to happen. And of course, since I can't use both my hands... I can't get this wire in. Here we go. Come on. There we go. Now we got all four lights. Current's climbing a little bit. Should settle, but it's probably going to get hot because there's no heat sink, so I better unplug it. Now I need to feel. All right, now they're getting warm. All right, perfect. So the next thing I'm going to do as I noticed, again, because someone else screwed with this amplifier, um, that bias pot, that one and that one are all set the same. But that one's not. So I need to take this guy and rotate it around. Of course, my screwdriver does not get in there. Because, again, my cousin Murphy is always out to get me see where is it set at all right that in there turn it around back that way all right now they're the same hopefully my current consumption drops again we'll see i mean it is four channels so the quiescent current's gonna be a little bit higher than normal again stupid wires won't stay in their holes She's climbing rapidly. There we go. It's kind of settled down a little bit. So let's get the heat sink on it and then we'll uh, put it back in its case and do a, do a test and hopefully it's all good. But before I do that, the other thing I want to do is clean these switches because these are also a common problem in um what ends up happening is they get real noisy and when they start to fail you'll notice intermittent audio or distorted audio and if you wiggle the switches it'll just pop in and out so i gotta clean all these switches um i can clean the potentiometers too but like that one would be pain because look how many of them there are so i need to get them both clean but more importantly i need to clean the switches okay now i want to show you how to put these uh spring clamps back in what you need to do is first you get it started so for example we just there's like a little groove that the finger goes in we line it up between the two transistors the best we can because you don't want to block this hole you don't want to block this hole because if you do you can't get the tool in there because like i said this is the tool that goes in this hole you just put it in there like that and then pull it back and it will pop off 
So we get it in there the best we can. Sometimes you can push these in by your finger, but most of the time you can't. So what you do is you take one of these or a nut driver or something like that and you place it at an angle, just like this. Then you grab a tapping apparatus, in my case, a big screwdriver, and then you just go tap, 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 tap with, with your other hand and you'll watch it go in and it'll bottom out. You'll feel it bottom out. Once it does that, it's in. That's how you do that. Okay, now it's time for the sound test. I went ahead and set everything up that I needed for all pass, no filtering, none of that stuff for right now. And the speaker is hooked up to the channel that was blown, which was the left rear. Uh, I have it set for two channel mode, so I don't have to have four RCAs, I can only have two. Uh, I'm missing the hardware, so there's not much I can do about that unless these are off the shelf and I can find the hardware. Uh, I have the terminals now tightened in, so let's go ahead and plug it in. Okay, we're still good, we're still lighting up. Let's watch the current draw. Remember, this is times two because there's two power supplies in parallel. So if I put them both in amps mode, that's how much each rail is putting out. So, all right, so I'm gonna let this idle for a minute and then I'm gonna do a sound check. Okay, so here we go. My inputs are now in there. My idle current is jumping up a little bit, probably because the transistors are getting hot. I did put some new thermal compound on there. So um, let's see, same settings as before. Let's see. Oh, there we go. All right, let's do um, a YouTube sound. All good. I will test the other channels, but this is my most important one because that's the one that was blown. also fix that trace too you can't see it it's hidden because that's the way it's supposed to be okie dokie thank you for watching if you have a comment please feel free to leave one